Today's video is dedicated to how to start investing for beginners. Investing in personal finance can be a very confusing, intimidating topic, and it may even sound like a foreign language. So my goal is that by the end of this video, you will have the confidence and foundation to start investing and understand finance even just 1% better. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Iris. I talk about all things money and life tips, so subscribe to learn more. First thing to cover is that investing has its risks. Investing allows you the opportunity to keep up with and even outpace inflation, but you take on the risk of loss in order to do so. Different investments have different levels of risk. Now you might be thinking, no way, why would I risk my money when I can just stick it in a savings account? For many reasons, but today I picked inflation. Inflation is when the price of things go up over time. Like this mascara, for example. 10 years ago, I could have bought a new one for like six bucks. Now it's upwards of $15. If your money is not growing, you're not gonna be able to buy much in the future. We also call this purchasing power. If your money's not growing, you're losing purchasing power over time. Investing helps your money keep up with and sometimes outpace inflation, but over the long term, this will also help you build wealth. Like I said, investing does come with its risks. So before you even start investing, there are some things that you need to have squared away, like having an emergency fund. I say this in almost every video, but an emergency fund is easily one of the most important money milestones and you should always, always have one. An emergency fund is crucial because it keeps you out of debt and it leaves your investments untouched. As you know, the stock market can be a little volatile, so it's really important that you have some cash tucked away. At minimum, you should have at least three months of expenses tucked away in a high yield savings account. And it should be in a high yield savings account. That way you can earn just a little bit of passive income on your tucked away cash. Now that you have an emergency fund, before you even invest, you should also be taking a look at your debts. Are you at least able to make the minimum payments? What's the interest rate on your debts? The stock market on average returns anywhere from 7 to 10% per year. The average credit card APR is something of like 20%. You cannot out-invest consumer debt. Now, you don't necessarily have to be 100% debt-free in order to start investing. But if your interest rate on your debts is much higher than what the stock market can return to you, it's something to consider. Like if you have a car loan or a mortgage that's sitting at like 3% and you could make your minimum payments on it, then you can probably handle investing simultaneously. Now, how much money do you need to start investing? Thanks to fractional shares, you can literally start investing with any amount that you want. I mean, you could actually invest $1 if you really wanted to. But remember, the stock market can be unpredictable at times, so you should avoid investing any money that you need relatively soon. And by soon, I mean the timeline of four years. Like, don't invest all of your spring break trip money and think you're gonna double it. Because high possibility, you're just not gonna go on the trip. So a personal example for myself, I'm also planning a wedding and I'd like to buy property relatively soon. So the money that I've set aside for that is tucked away in a high yield savings account and I'm not putting it into the stock market. What do you invest in? You invest into assets. An asset is something that you own that holds financial value. Think real estate, stocks, ETFs, and more. But for this video, we're gonna be covering stocks. A stock is just partial ownership of a company. So think if you buy into some Tesla stock, you are now partial, partial owner of Tesla the company. Now, as the company grows, your share will begin to grow with it. Now, there is nothing wrong with picking individual stocks. It's just a little bit more time consuming and risky, especially if you're not really sure what you're looking at. Like, let's say you buy into a certain company and then they go and have a really bad scandal and their stock plummets. Now you're out some money. And you're probably thinking there's like thousands of stocks to pick from, how do you know what to look for? And you don't necessarily have to because something you can opt for is an index fund. An index fund is a portfolio of stocks that are designed to track a particular market index. So essentially when you buy into an index fund, you are getting a whole bunch of stocks in one go. And for my visual learners, stay with me because I have a really good visual. Think of this little guy as a stock. And this is the stock market. Yeah, there's no way I'm about to go through all of these and pick one. So instead of doing all of that work and picking them individually, we just buy the whole jar because we get a bunch of stocks in one go. 
Now, a very common index fund that most people have heard of is the S&P 500, and that tracks the top 500 performing companies. Here are the top holdings of the S&P 500, and you're probably going to be familiar with most of them. And historically, this returns around 7 to 10 percent per year. So let's see what would happen if we only invested into just this one index fund for the rest of our lives. So you can potentially end up with gains as big as this for about minimal amount of work on your end. And this is all thanks to the power of compound interest. So the younger that you can start investing, the better because your money has more time to grow. Compound interest is the addition of interest to the principal. So in other words, it's, it's interest on principal plus more interest. Now, where does one even start investing? You can do this in several different accounts like a retirement account or a regular brokerage account. I personally prioritize all the tax advantage accounts first and then any leftover money that I have to invest goes into a regular brokerage account. So that kind of looks like prioritizing all of like my retirement accounts first and then what's ever left over goes into my regular taxable brokerage account. This is an individual retirement account that is funded with post-tax dollars. So think from your already taxed paycheck. You've already paid taxes on this money. But the coolest thing about this account is that all the gains inside of it are tax free. Here are places where you can open these accounts. You can just go directly to the website and open a Roth IRA. It takes like maybe 10 minutes. I personally use Fidelity and I have no issues with them. I think their interface is really easy to use. Another thing that I like about this account is that you have full control over it. So within this account, you have to be investing the money yourself and picking your own assets which again, I keep it very simple. And the only thing that's inside of my Roth IRA are just index funds. A brokerage is just a platform that allows you to invest into various assets. So individual stocks, index funds, some even allow you to invest in crypto now, if you're into that. I use public, I am affiliated with them. So I'll leave the link to sign up down below. I think public has a very beginner friendly inner user face and they're very easy to use. This account is just a regular account. It's not a retirement account. So the money can move in and out of this account very freely. Now I'm going to share with you my personal investing strategy. My investment strategy is very boring. I'm not about to sit there and look at individual stocks, read financial reports, stare at a screen all day. I'm not about to do that. So I just buy into broad market index funds consistently. I buy in every single month and I hold. I also don't time the market, I just consistently buy in, and this is also a strategy that's known as dollar cost averaging. This strategy is when you buy in consistently regardless of share price. So whether the market is up or down, I'm buying. I will say though, if the market is like extra down, then I'll just buy a little bit more. But this method is super effective and it is incredibly mindless. You can even set a lot of your accounts to do this automatically for you. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but if you have like a retirement account with your employer and they're automatically taking up the money from your paycheck and investing it for you, you are also dollar cost averaging. Investing has so much information that it's really hard to cover all of it in just one video. So if I missed anything, please let me know what you want to see more of down below in the comments. I'm not a financial advisor and none of this was financial advice. I'm just sharing already public information. And if you found value in this video, please hit the thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And if you haven't already, definitely join me on Instagram and TikTok because I post about financial literacy there daily. And subscribe for more because I'll see you in the next one.